Hello and welcome back to Unfold Place. So this is Ruto Lake. The thing is though, I'm not seeing any ruins here. <laughs> there were supposed to be has been stashed in the ruins on Ruto Lake. So I, I misread. Wait, where was that rock I threw? Oh, it's gone now. Damn it. And that might have been important. Ruins on Ruto Lake, though. Yeah, this doesn't ring a red bell at all. It's getting deeper. I am swinging faster though, that's for sure. I mean those over there, that's not a ruin though, that's uh... That's just a wall, isn't it? I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> Bellum. Nope, it's not opening. History of the Sword Part Three: Miracle of the White Scale is told by King Dorothan. I was going to say that in distant pan stores, the main had a king with no special talent for the art of war. Would like to skill with the blade he made off in love for his people and especially love for his queen. One day, news reached the king of a horde of monsters gathering in the Sodoban Highlands. The king steeled himself in war to protect his people, but the queen knew how ill suited for the task it was. Word for his life, she wove one of her own skills into his armor, hoping that her love would protect him in battle. It seemed for a time that the tide of battle favored the sword and that all would make it safely home. But the cunning little fuss General saw an opening and seized it, driving the king's forces into a corner. Just when the general's sword was ready to crash down upon the king, a miracle took place. An errant sunbeam reflected from the scale on his arm and blinded the little fast, stopping the death blow from falling. This was the chance the king needed to rally his forces and turn the tide, taking down the general and securing victory. This became known as a miracle of the wide scale, a scale that only female Sora possess. It was this miracle that began the tradition of sword princesses crafting armor for their future husbands. Oh. Oh, that is that is quite the legacy link you have to live up to. That's a cute story though. So much lore! So much fucking lore! I fucking love it! They're really making this into a true fantasy universe. Oh, I love it! They're like repurposing Zelda into a true fantasy universe. Fuck yeah! Uh, we still never found those ruins at Lake Ruto.
maybe if we like then Oh, that's just you. Really, dude? Oh. Okay, enough stalling. I really thought that would be it right there, but it's not. Yeah. This is not leg Ludo. Or it is, but this is the wrong... Oh well. Off we go. We'll have to do it without the Sora Helm, I guess. That's a shame. I really like the design of the Sora armor in uh, in Twilight Princess, and this one looks rad as shit as well. Okay, in we go. Huh? I guessed it. Okay. Okay. What is remaining don't give up okay so that's one of them Hmm. 
So that's the map, right? Okay. So we gotta turn off all the the Good. You've obtained the map of the Divine Beast. You will see several glowing points on your map, which represent the terminals that control Ruta. Take Ruta back by activating all of the terminals. Be careful. Okay. Well, that's straightforward enough. This is not that easy. This is not that easy. Something will show up. Unactivated terminals remain. Oh, so this is a main. Okay, that is why I was just allowed to walk in here. Okay, well that that makes sense. Okay. I love how it's a 3D map of the entire fucking thing. That is cool. Imagine her fear when she was piloting this giant monstrosity. And then imagine her increased fear when she suddenly loses control of it. Oh my god, that is terrifying. Okay. A little ruby. I mean, nice, but not what I was looking for. of a moblin. Okay.
Oh, wait a second. I know. I know. Chests are made of metal. So I can just remove the chest. Stay there, you. Not only is this thing like taken over by Ganon and shit, it's also kind of broken, isn't it? Wait a second. There's a fucking thing there. I didn't even notice that there was one there. Is there a way to stop the water flow then? There are three 
terminals remaining. You can do it. Damn it. Okay. But I think I have it now. I think I know how to do it now. I just need to, like, pause it at the right time. And then I'll be able to fucking, um... To go inside the thing. Okay. There we go. There are two terminals remaining. You're nearly there. Okay. Now I just need to get further up. How do I get further up though? Probably do it like that. Just a second. That's the wrong door. <laughs> um, so moving the trunk also moves things on the inside of the thing. This is this is harder than most Zeldas. You know why it's harder than most Zeldas? Because you already have all the tools, so they can kind of they can commit more to making interesting puzzles. And that's cool and all, but also makes the game hell of a lot more difficult. This is probably the hardest Zelda. This is, I mean, beyond like Zelda 2. This is 
probably the hell to sell the game. I could to totally see them market it as such as well. Like, the hardest Zelda game. Prepare to... <laughs> prepare to mumble edition, because you'll be grumbling over these fucking puzzles. Oh, I landed in the middle of a thing. <laughs> okay. Well, because that means we can then climb. We can use the trick from before. Haha! -ha! You thought you had me, didn't you? Dumbass fucking game. Alright. Uh, I'll make my way up there and then that's it for this episode. Because <laughs> I can see we're at 40 minutes. So. Let me just make it up there. And then I'll let you off the hook. Didn't help. How did I manage to before? Maybe I somehow made it slower? That's a bit annoying. Stupid ass fucking okay. All right, let's try it from this angle didn't uh oh, god damn it okay maybe it is easier to just Maybe we can do it like this then.
All right. No. Yes! And what does the water do? Eh? Okay. Well, if I can watch this episode of Iron Place, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you join next time for more shenanigans. Until then, bye.